So I'm just trying to entertain the people, you know. Do yes. what here. We got you. Uh, special guest joining us now. I've known him a long time. and uh, He's uh, Warriors pre- and post-game TV host. And I think he made more biggest drapes. Because every time you guy. go off on something, I get a text from Oh, I love Kyle. <laughs> <laughs> Bud J. Hill is with us. B, what's going on? Well, hey, Whitey, man. Long time no talk, man. I love you. I just get a kick out of Draper. Always crying about something. Whining and doing this box score. You know, he's paying handsomely, obviously. But it's always, you know, how oh, bad the fans deserve better. So it's must-see TV. What is Drake's going to say after an L? <laughs> you, you know what, Bonte? You, you know what, man? I came on your radio show. Earlier today, I was civil. I, we invited you on our show. I'm going to treat you with respect like you should do all guests. So I'm not going to throw smoke at you like the way you guys did with me. After today, just give us our flowers. I'm talking about the city of Sacramento, the city of trees, the city of winners, the team that ended the Warriors dynasty. That's I just want you to eat some humble pie after tonight. Uh, I'll, I'll try, but I don't know what that tastes like. I've never had it before. Can you show me what, can you describe the, the flavor and everything that comes with that? No, seriously, you we were, you were very civil this morning, Kyle. I was actually proud of you. Man. You came out of that junk. But you and Jasky had a little smoke. There was some smoke there. It got a little spicy there. But for the most part, it was all civil. Shasky's a hater. He's a, he's a hater, man. That guy is too negative for me. My God. How do you put up with that dude every day? My gosh. Like, he is so disrespectful. He brought up Brock Purdy. He's like, how your Eagles feel about December 13th? I'm like, bro, y'all just, boy. y'all just choked away the Super Bowl. What are you talking about? I don't care about no meaningless regular season game. Uh-huh. You choked away the Super Bowl, Shasky. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Come yeah. on. Uh, uh, even I had to fall back on that one. I was like, hey, man, I remember that walk out of the Legion Stadium. I'm not bringing up football season. I don't know why he went there. We kind of lost on that one. I had to fall back with, with that one. But we got a big game tonight, man. The loser going into a disappointing all season, right? I mean, this is just yes. big stakes, fellas. Yeah. Bonte, what do you think the Kings do that the Warriors are most worried about tonight? With it, Steve, Steve Kerr gets that whiteboard out. What's at the top of his list? Hey, guys, this is what they do that presents us with the biggest problem. What's at the top? I, I think I think it's shooting the three and allowing them to shoot the three. The Warriors have had a problem with defending the three point line when teams have gone off, whether it's Boston smoking them by over fifty or just last Friday against the Pelicans. The second quarter flipped the game. Why? Live ball turnovers are turning to wide open three point shots. Then the Pelicans got in the rhythm and they were stroking it like they were last Thursday in Sacramento. Ten to thirteen in that second quarter. And you notice the kid is shooting forty eight percent of their shots from the three-point line over the last few weeks here. So I do worry about dribble drive penetration because the Warriors at the point of attack, there's a weakness defensively, which is why you always see them go to zone at times because they can't guard man for man. There's a lot of weaknesses defensively. So I do worry about Fox getting downhill, kicking out to the three-point shooters where you got Keon Ellis or Keegan Murray or even Sabonis out there from 15 feet where he's getting wide open jumpers. The three-point shot tonight is going to be huge, and it's going to dictate a lot, I think, the result of this game on how the Warriors defend that three-point line against Sacramento. Bonte, how has the toll of this season, the Clay Thompson stuff, the Draymond Green stuff, affected this team? And do you think they are supremely confident, like in years past, walking into this building? Wow, that's a great question, Drapes. Um, you know, it has taken a toll, right? I think, you know, the Draymond thing, they, they got through it. They were 19-24 to 24 for the most part. They've been rolling over the last 37, 38 games, one of the best records in the NBA. And they've won 17 of their last 21 on the road, which is flipped from last season when they only won 11 road games. And this year they won 25. So they've gotten through all the clay stuff. Clay adapting and sacrificing to come off the bench. Now, I know he's going to start tonight, but him just taking that role reversal and embracing it, his numbers actually went up. He has a fire here since the All Star break. Clay shot over 41% from three and 46 from the floor. So he's giving you 19 20 every single night. So he's gotten through the toll of everything. But obviously, this could be the last of many for the Go to State Warriors. It could be the last time we see. Steph, Dre, and Clay share that Warriors uniform on the floor together. Could be the last time we see the and Andrew Wiggins or Jonathan Camigo because everything is up in the air if the Warriors lose this game. You don't have the highest payroll in basketball and not make it out to play a tournament or at least not fight for a chance to get into the playoffs. This game is just for another opportunity to play another play game. So uh, it's already been a disappointing season for the Dubs. 
So, I mean, this could be a lot. So, I, I would hope that they're taking this game seriously, and I believe that they are, knowing that Sacramento can bring it in that building, the energy that the fans will produce at the G1C tonight. I think they're taking it very, very seriously. They don't want their season to end. They want to be last until May and June. These boys are used to playing for a long time. Catching up with Bonte Hill, Warriors TV pre- and post-game host. And, uh, B, uh, what do the Warriors do here when it's like 345 into the first quarter? And Sabonis has, you know, nine points and 11 rebounds. And Trace Jackson Davis is like tapping out. Are we going to see Kavon Looney? If, if Trace Jackson Davis can't handle uh, Sabonis, are, you think we'll see Kavon Looney early tonight? Oh, absolutely. I think they started to dust him off, Whitey. That's a good point with Lou Dog. You know Looney very well. He will be dusted off for about five to ten minutes, maybe 13 minutes. And he's a trusted veteran. I think people sleep on the fact that he's a three-time champion. And in 2022, he had some of the more signature moments in the playoffs for the Golden State Warriors, whether it was game two of the West Finals against Dallas when they're down 20, and Looney has a third quarter of the ages. Or when he grabs 20-plus rebounds against, Grizzlies, against the Grizzlies in a do-or-die game, game six, because the Warriors didn't want to travel all the way to Memphis for game seven. Or Lou Dogg in Boston, when he's the lone big in game four, alongside Wiggins, Clay, and Steph. He's a trusted agent for the team. So I don't think Steve Kerr's going to mess around. He's been dusting them off against Portland. He dusted them off against New Orleans. I think we will see Looney at some point. It won't be a detriment to Trace Jackson Davis if he's not playing well. He's a rookie. He's never been in this environment. This is an assembly hall in Bloomington, Indiana. This is the NBA. This is the four <laughs> game. There's levels to this. So I do think Steve Kerr, if he senses his rookie, if the moment is too bright, and Sabonis is cooking them in all categories, we will see a lot of Looney tonight uh, for the Golden State Warriors. You know, one guy that hasn't been mentioned at all on the radio today, any Chris Paul, what's what's his impact for this team? What does he bring to this team, and how has he been playing for you guys? You know, Drapes, I think he's been great. I think he's been great. Ever since he came back from the left-hand fracture in early January, he shot over 40% for the three-point line. And I think the most important thing for CP3 tonight, being that stable after with the bench unit, the Warriors have the third rated bench in all the NBA, and he's been the constant. He's been a consistent one. You ever heard of people about him? You ever heard of people about him complaining about starting or, or coming off the bench? And I think the most important thing tonight is he's, he's going to be able to settle down a young Jonathan Kamiga. Kamiga has not seen a lot of playing time in the playoffs over the last couple of years with the Go to Say Warriors. His rookie year, he didn't play during that championship run. He just watched. Last year, he got a sniff against Sacramento. Let's see, you know, the last five games of that series, he was MIA. He was a non-factor. So I think in a game like this where Kaminga is trying to find his rhythm after missing six straight games due to the tendonitis, he's been back the last three. It's been choppy. It's been up and down. I think C 3 having a veteran like that is going to help out a young athletic stallion, which the Warriors need tonight against the, against the Kings. They need athleticism. And Kaminga provides that for the Warriors and a guy who can get to the cup and get to the free throw line. So I think CP3, his biggest factor today, I, I believe, is not only running the offense, being in crunch time at times to make sure they don't turn the ball over, but it's getting J.K. going, Jonathan Kaminga off the bench, and getting them jump-started on hopefully a big-time run for J.K. Yeah, and be like you said, Chris Paul, he takes care of the ball, and I think that could be, outside of the three-point shooting, that could be one of the keys tonight. But I wanted to ask you about uh, GP2. How much will the Warriors miss him tonight, and how exactly – Will they miss him? Yeah, I, I think first and foremost, you think about De'Aaron Fox, and they'll miss him for 13 to 15 minutes on Fox. We talk about GP2. We talk about Davion Mitchell and Keon Ellis, two guys who could pick up full court 94 feet at press point guards. Well, that's GP2 right there for the Golden State Warriors. And that's one less defender on De'Aaron Fox. So now you're asking a lot from Andrew Wiggins to basically cut the head of the stake off of the Sacramento Kings, and that's De'Aaron Fox. And, look, he's going to get his. But can you force him into a 9 for 23? Or will he go off 10 of 17 or 12 of 18 and he's lighting you up for 35 40? So that's a lot more stress on Andrew Wiggins to defend De'Aaron Fox at a high level because whenever Fox checks out the game, that's when I want Wiggins to check out the game. When Fox is in the game, I want Wiggins in the game because is Kaminga ready for it to sign it like that? I think he gets too handsy. He may fall for some pump fakes. We know the chef is not going to guard De'Aaron Fox at times. But maybe you see a little bit of Draymond Green that we saw late in the series last year between these two teams where Draymond Green was picking up Fox late in the fourth quarter, a game four, sometimes in game five. So um, it is a huge blow for the Warriors. That's 13 less minutes that you have somebody pressing up on De'Aaron Fox. And it puts a lot more pressure on Andrew Wiggins to stay out of foul trouble and keep Fox out the lane. Bonte Hill joining us. Bonte, let me ask you a question, man, about your fan base. 
Do they know basketball existed uh, uh, before 2013 and Steph coming? Like, I, I don't see any Monte Ellis jerseys, no Chris Mullen jerseys. It's Golden State Steph Curry jerseys, freshly printed. Like, where's the fan base at? Where's the loyalists? Where's the guys that have been around during the Al Addles era and stuff like that? Will Chamberlain. Give me some Will Chamberlain jerseys. A Donald Foyle. A Donald Foyle. All I see hey, is dude. Steph Curry jerseys, man. Hey, listen, man. Jake's just blinded by the blue and yellow. Whenever he sees the Warrior jersey, his visit goes blurry. It goes from 2010 to I need bifocals here. It's just got a curse on drapes. It's like, you know, he, he he sees a spell. It just hits him in the nose, and he's like, oh, what, what's going on here? He, 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 so he starts sweating and everything. Listen, man, the Will Chamberlain jerseys are out there. The Mate Ellis jerseys are out there. The We Believe jerseys is out there. I will say some of our fan base is ridiculous. You got your Steph stands. You got your Clay stands. That's just fandom, right? I mean, these people are insane. They tell me that Steve Kerr can't coach. You know, they tell me that, you know, Steph Curry is a clutch. My old fan base tells me what I need to know about the Golden State Warriors. I've been around the struggle where they made the postseason one time in 19 years. I know what it's like in the projects, man, not having tele- that's televised games. So I'm going to enjoy this one. And you know what? If We, we earned the right to arrogant drinks. We've been waiting a long time for this. And we're not waiting to let this go. We understand the dynasty is slipping away. The good times are slipping away. But we're going to enjoy it until the wheels fall off. And so let us cook, Dre. You, you, know, you, know, you, you, you know what you guys are like, Bonte? You're turning into Celtics fans. One title over the last 40 years trying to hang on to tradition. It's a new era in the NBA, big fella. The dynasty is over. Y'all need to hit the reset button, try to retool. This is the final year, and we're going to end it here tonight. That's all I'm saying. Hey, all I'm saying is people want to come play in the Bay, baby. You got high country. You got so many things to do, Drake. We will be okay. The most stable <laughs> franchise in the NBA. The Warriors will be okay as long as number 30 is rocking that jersey. So, Drake, I'll be looking for the postgame show tonight. As soon as I get off the air, I'm rewinding NBC Sports California. And why do you get that text? I are love you with, Kyle <laughs> Are you with Chris Mullen tonight? Oh, I will bully tonight, baby. We're running the rock and roll. We got the Hall of Famers in the building. We got Fezzi here, NBA champ. We got it all covered. You know what time it is. Although they got me in the minor league studio today. I don't know what's up with that. Are you in the studio B? You in the small yeah, studio? Yeah, studio B, man. They got to see. They got to see. They got to see. They don't even respect today, y'all man. anymore down there. That's crazy. Wow. He's it's in B. Small studio, studio B for Bonte. <laughs> studio B for Bonte. Thanks, Bonte. Great to talk with you. We appreciate Fellas, it. Fellas, enjoy the Bye. game. Always good to touch you, Whitey. White Draper, I'll be looking for those tweets. Looking for you. Talk about it too physical. <laughs> All right, man. I'll Thank you, Bonte. Oh, boy. When we come back, I, I love the fact.